Hello Internet! In this video I'm going to show you how to paint a forest background with Photoshop. I'm doing that for an illustration that I have to do and to begin with you have to mark the horizon line and then uh, begin drawing uh, or sketching the trunks of your background trees. Do it in new layer so um, we have here a white uh, background and in an in a layer on top of the background we are drawing the trees you can use gray because uh, we can take care of the color later The trick here is to add trees in different at different distances. Here I'm drawing the, the tree trunks which correspond to the trees which are closer to us. Just saving my file here. Now, uh, once you have your trees, apply a curves adjustment and enhance the green channel and also a little bit the blue channel if you want, or otherwise tweak the, the color channels as you want to reach the desired color. You are just coloring the, giving color to the gray. In a slightly darker tone, I add some color variation to the to the ground. For the moment, keep it simple. Just add colors which are rather flat, without texture. Uh, we will take care of that later. Adding grass, leaves, and so on. Now create a new layer and put it behind uh, this layer to give it some color, which is the color of the background or if you want of the sky behind the trees. That will be the layer which will be further back. Add a little bit of brightness, saturation. Keep a, a reasonably reasonable color palette. Like don't go, don't add very very different colors. I create a new layer, and on top of the sky layer, add some more tree trunks. This will be behind the front trunks, so uh, don't paint them with the same tone. They will be slightly less dark darker slightly less yeah slightly brighter and their color will be closer to that of the sky or background because they are farther away as you see you can keep it very simple just draw some lines because they are behind, they will be less defined and we are adding leaves on top so they will be partially hidden so it's okay to make them simple here I'm changing the brush to a brush, to a brush which is uh, has pressure control for width and it has 100% opacity those are custom brushes that I will add in the description. We are drawing some small branches to give it more realism. But at this point what we are doing is almost like a silhouette.
now pick that brush block the block the pixels of the layer so that you only paint on the pixels which uh, are filled with a darker color add texture on top of the tree trunks also you'll be able to find this brush in the description now do the same with a brighter color and just color pick from the background if you want color pick as much as possible instead of picking new colors from the uh, Photoshop palette I'm looking for the grass brush and I'm painting some grass on the bottom of the trees we're still in the same layer, in the same background layer so I didn't change the layer and I'm using the same color of the tree trunks I color pick darker color depending on the background sky color on the color of the tree trunks to give more contrast also when you're painting grass make sure to give some uh, color variation with this brush paint like this from from up to down to give the desired direction to the to the grass and just do what I do Now I'm doing the same thing, painting the grass, but in the in the front layer with the front trees. Now I'm duplicating the background layer, the layer with the background uh, trees. I duplicate it, I flip it horizontally, and I transform it. so it looks like I, I have more trees and I don't need to draw a bunch of more trees in the background what I do is uh, since those trees are even further I paint them with a color which is closer to the background so lock the, lock the uh, pixels of the layer and paint on top directly again just color pick from the scene don't need to really don't need to use the Photoshop palette a lot I'll name the, name the trees, name the layers, sorry, so that you know what is what. When you have two or three layers, it's okay, but if you have more and more layers and keep on adding, you need to name them. Yeah, I'm adding more tree, uh, more branches to the front trees. Here I'm not using any reference from the trees. I just comes from my mind, but uh, you'll you'll always get a better result if you look for photos of trees in internet and you just copy them, use them for reference to take a look at the shapes of the branches, um, shapes of the trunk, the branch density it will look better and more realistic
I'm just adding some grass here. So just a tiny bit more, uh, more detail. That's very easy to do. It has no secret. Just needs a little bit of patience, but you don't need any kind of skill for that. Now I block the pixels, the layer pixels. Now I do it. So choose that brush and repeat what you did with uh, background trees to give texture to the to the tree trunks. I'm actually using the replace color adjustment tool to give some more color to the trees which were too gray. Tweak it and play around with that as needed. And apply some texture to the front trees, same as you did before with the back trees. Here I'm, I'm zooming in a bit because the front trees they are closest so I want to give them a bit more detail and be more careful about the detail because they will be um, the most visible. Also you can notice that the color there is very little color variation right now in the picture. I'll add some color variation later but um, now what I'm looking is uh, I'm looking for a good value contrast and a good uh, color harmony in the picture and for that it's better to focus on the, the values and that the different elements are well separated um, it's good to use low saturation colors and it's good to use to keep uh, hue or color variation to uh, to a minimum so here right now basically everything is the same is the same hue is the same kind of bluish green Also notice that I'm using the darkest tone for the front trees. As objects get more distance, there is an effect called atmospheric uh, atmospheric effect, which tends to tone down the the darkest values, so they appear more hazy and more grayish or brighter. So the darkest values, it's it's better to, to put the darkest values usually in in the objects which are closest now let's add some leaves I picked that brush to add some rough uh, blobs and later I will add some leaves with a custom brush to just pick a color which is uh, greener than the tree trunks more saturated so here realize that uh, the general tone of the scene is green because there is a dense layer of leaves uh, creating some sort of ceiling so all the light coming in has a sort of green filter that's why everything is basically greenish but the, ele the element which has more green in this scene is the leaves so they need to be more saturated just do some strokes trying to get a nice uh, overall shape of, uh, of leaf uh, groups And by the way, I'm painting this in a layer on top of the foreground trees, of the foreground tree trunks. 
painted leaves so that there is more density uh, in the middle of each sort of uh, leaf uh, leaf collection or leaf blob and less in the edges. So now block that layer, pick a um, soft brush and with a lighter tone add some light lighting or illumination to the to the leaves. They don't look like leaves right now but they will look in a second. So add some light and then add some darker tone. Alright, now we're going to use our leaves brush, which you will find in the description. Pick one tone and begin, just begin painting. The trick for this is uh, do few strokes with one color and then pick another different color. And try to avoid having areas large areas of the same color. So mix the light and dark tones one on top of the other. Make the light tone predominate in the light side and the dark tone pre predominate in the dark side. But mix them a bit. Also try to keep a consistent lighting in this case the light comes from the top right so for all these uh, leaf uh, blobs the lightest part is concentrated in the in the upper right and don't worry too much about the specific color that you're using because we are going to tune that later For the moment, focus on creating a nice effect of uh, value, variation, and lighting. Trying to get this sense of uh, volume. Okay, that looks nice. So I merged the layers that contain the, the leaves and I named I named them. I am creating a duplicate of the layer with the foreground trees. I'm flipping that horizontally and I'm reducing it a bit in scale and transforming it because I thought there was there were not enough trees in the front. So I'm tuning the size and the dimensions as needed, making them slightly smaller. Now because it feels like they are too much overlapping, I am selecting each trunk from the layer which I just created and I separate them into different layers. For this, you can just select them and press, uh, I think it's edit cut into new layer. But the base point is I'm creating multiple layers where each of each layer has one of the three trunks. And then I move them around to avoid having excess symmetry. As you can see, I'm 
I'm as much as lazy as I can when I paint, which is a good thing because you save time. If someone tells you that's cheating, you can tell them, no, why? What matters is that the end result looks good. And the faster I do it, honestly, the better. Who wants to spend three hours doing this if they can do it in one hour, right? tuning a bit the color and the brightness and the contrast of the background trees for this you can use replace color adjustment and brightness contrast adjustment could also use curves there are many ways to go around that I'm doing the same that I did for the tree trunks but duplicating the leaves I'm putting them behind the front trees I'm trying to locate, them, to locate them correctly. I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm separating the different uh, tree group, uh, leaf groups in different layers and I relocate them individually. Just the same. me erasing some parts of the tr of the of the lips which i didn't want to be there or which were the boundaries of the selections i made rotating them and the and transforming them in different ways and the point here is try to avoid symmetry as much as possible nature usually don't have doesn't have a lot of symmetry it's more like uh, random patterns everywhere I'm doing the same tuning the brightness and contrast of the background leaves because they are farther away so they shouldn't be exactly the same uh, tone and color I just use the hue saturation layer also to give them a slightly more bluish tone and make them a bit brighter now I'm painting some more leaves in the background because there were some empty spot and this is for the this for the trees which are farther away I'm using far less detail here and a much uh, much brighter value much closer to the to the background color As I said, the further in the distance you go, the less contrast there is. In particular, the less value contrast, but also less color contrast because everything t tends to adapt the color of the sky or the color of the background light. I'm adding some uh, sort of leaves in the in the ground to to give the impression that there are some small bushes. Well, so I'm fine tuning a bit, erasing something which was a bit out of place mm. 
naming my layers to be able to identify them. So at this point I have like uh, three main layers of trees. The front layer, the mid layer, which I created from duplicating the front layer, and the background layer. Now in the layer with the front leaves, apply a replace color adjustment to tune the effect a bit. I like to punch the saturation a bit. So what you have to do th here is select the light part and tune it. I like to give a slightly yellowish hue to the light part and increase the saturation. And I'll do the same with the part in shadow. Select the shadow part. I like for the shadows to give a slightly uh, blue color and increase the saturation a bit in this case. Sometimes it's better to decrease the saturation actually. But you, you play around with that and until you are happy. I'm looking to give some kind of uh, climbing climbing uh, plant into the crawling up the tree trunks in the front. So I'm just using the same brush that I use for the leaves. adding some color variation and I'm color picking always from the from the leaves I'm adding some lighter tones here in the leaves by the way I'm doing all that in a layer on top I don't want to risk uh, not liking it and not being able to go back. Now I realize I need to tune also the color of the grass on top because it's too unsaturated and it doesn't match the color of the leaves. So I'm doing a quick selection here. You don't need to be super detailed here, just select the area where the, tree, where the grass is. Now select one of the tones and tune it with a replace color. Again, just play around with that until you are happy. Usually I modify the hue uh, scale and the saturation scale. And what I do is uh, apply one replace color effect to the either the dark part or the mid tone and a different one and a different one to the light part, lighter part. Which is what I did just now. I selected brush I used to paint grass and I'm going to give it a bit more detail and more variation. What it was missing a more darker tone so just painting from up to down. And here ends my tutorial. Remember to check in the description the links to the brushes 
uh, if you enjoyed the video click that subscribe button give a thumbs up and till next time